Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Open Shutter. And tonight we have special guest Jason Foley with us to discuss macro photography. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Jason does some, some crazy macro stuff, um, some super yeah. high magnification stuff, which is fantastic. So we're going to learn how he does it. We're going to learn some of the processes, some of the equipment used to get the images. Uh, a couple other guys have a few macro images as well, just different styles because there are different ways to do macro. Yeah. But uh, before we get into talking macro, let's just go around the table and introduce ourselves quickly. So my name is Brian McGowan. I am a Brampton, Ontario based photographer and videographer. And you can check out my YouTube channel. The link is right there below me. And uh, yeah, I just, I take photos of everything take videos of everything and uh, have fun with it. Anyway, over to uh, Evans. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Evans. I'm also based in Brampton, Ontario, uh, primarily a wedding photographer, but I shoot everything else for fun. So um, macro is something that I do mainly typically just for events, wedding uh, rings and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm definitely interested to see some of the stuff that Jason is doing. Um, when it comes to, you know, taking your time to really, really go into the actual macro shot, not the ones I do for wedding. <laughs> so, yeah. um, yeah. It's going to be a fun show. Uh, you can also check out my YouTube channel, uh, same name as my name right here, Evermore Media on YouTube. Um, we do more video and a few photography stuff, but mostly video stuff these days, uh, mm -hmm. gear reviews and stuff like that. So go check it out as well. All right. Uh, I think we'll skip Jason and go oh, Jason. to uh, Andre. <laughs> yeah. We'll save Jason for last. Yeah. Is Andre Before is Andre? It? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Hi, Andre. everybody. Andre. Yeah, awkward silence. Awkward silence. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Andre Von Nickish here, uh, also a Brampton photographer. <sighs> Shoot everything people landscapes and then all that specialty stuff the light painting steel wool and all that fun explosive stuff so uh, awesome <laughs> yeah yeah Still so bad. yes and that's my youtube channel link too so we all have channels so just go watch us all yes please <laughs> all the time. I, have, I have to add all the links after we're done this but Come they will on, be bro. there yeah. i know i know slacker <laughs> i know i was busy today sorry yeah, and now to well, Paul. Um, thanks everyone for jumping on the the usual crew uh, that tunes in. Pat, Jessica, thanks so much for spending another Wednesday. It's the first uh, episode of fall, so I'm wearing my hoodie. I'm missing my pumpkin spice latte, so that's unfortunate. But uh, yeah, first episode of fall. So what can I say? Lots of stuff going on. Big thanks to Jason uh, for doing this again. I told Jason yeah, sure. in the green room, I think Jason is probably one of the best presenters we've ever had because Thank he just knows how to present. So I need to like talk to Jason after the show <laughs> to understand how to like talk to the camera. So, yeah. um, he's really good. He's going to teach us all some really exciting stuff. And, uh, like Andre said, if this is your first time watching this show. We all have YouTube channels. Um, I'm working all kinds of stuff. I just dropped a video yesterday, Brian, well, I also, also want to thank <coughs> Brian for leading the Halloween thing on the weekend. He did a really first great of job. five. First of five, another one coming up this Saturday. So uh, if you haven't checked out that video, check it out. It's on my channel. Uh, Evans has a cameo. You can't see Evans, but he's in there and Andre drops by. So uh, lots of fun. So more vlogs about that stuff coming up too. So lots of stuff can, going uh, on. I can drop a sample from from that workshop if you want. Should. Just yeah. quickly here so that people can see. Take a couple spots left. Teasers. So, so they can see, those who haven't signed up, they can see what they are missing. Yes. It's fun. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> wow, look at yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Crazy. Uh, that was something Laura and I set up in like two minutes after everybody left. Andre that was, was there. Cool. That was right Andre the parking was, lot, right? Yeah, I think, Andre, you were working the smoke, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I grabbed a couple shots of Laura just next to the parking yeah. lot. So... She's lots incredible. Of She's got incredible. lots of photos yeah. in the forest. Yeah, yeah I think uh, so. I think... The next one this weekend is Creepy Clown. The weekend yep. after is Scarecrow. Oh. The yeah. weekend after that is a zombie in Graffiti Alley. I know Jess has signed Jessica's up for that one. That. Yeah. <laughs> and then the final one is actually with the cowboy instead of Laura. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully and that's the... going to involve fireworks and pumpkins and all kinds of craziness. Yeah, a little over the top. <laughs> yeah, it'll be over the top for sure for the last one. 
Hmm. We just gotta sign off on the rider first. I know a lot of people that are terrified of creepy clowns, just for the record. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, we're going to be walking around downtown Oakville with a creepy right clown. On. So, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna it's going to be a lot of fun. Gonna Sounds be terrifying. Be yeah. Monday morning. Yeah. I'm going to miss it. Damn. I Kim, agree, Laura. Kim said, it's amazing. Kim she, yeah, Kim said she had a good time. Yeah. Kim, yeah thanks, Kim, Kim. It was a lot of fun. Glad it. you came out. So more right, stuff anyway. coming down. Anyway, enough about that stuff. Yeah. Enough about that stuff. That housekeeping's done. And we'll end the show with another challenge for the community. Mm. Mm, awesome. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to issue another challenge. So it's not oh, a good. contest. It's just a challenge. Just a challenge. Right. We want everybody to participate if possible. So yeah, mandatory. Anyway, that, that's awesome. enough about all that. Let's uh, let's find out about Jason now. Yeah. Um, so, well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Foley. I'm, uh, I'm a Brampton resident as well. And uh, when it comes to photography, I'm, I'm purely an amateur. Um, but I dabble in a little bit of everything. So uh, I actually, my YouTube channel is called Critters to Cosmos, which um, I think really sums up uh, what I love about photography. I, I photograph everything from the smallest possible things to uh, galaxies uh, in space, uh, which uh, was our previous show that I was on. So um, macro um, is something that uh, uh, is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I find that all types of macro, uh, sorry, all types of photography really uh, are almost therapy for me, but macro especially. Um, and it's, uh, you'll see later, I do a lot of insect photography. I love connecting with that little world. Um, it brings your pacing way, way down and it's it's something that I really enjoy. So um, yeah, uh, for a living, I, I mainly play with spreadsheets and I, and I work in the transportation industry, so I couldn't be any further from photography, but uh, but it's certainly that something that good. I love. Yeah, certainly something that I love, yeah. Great. Love so I appreciate really you having me on. Passion. No, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah. So yeah. Um, before before we get into techniques and everything, yeah. Uh, why don't we talk about some of the gear? Uh, we sure. all know you need a camera. We yep. all know a macro lens is helpful. Yeah. Uh, let's let's find out specifically what you use. Well, so so funny story, and this is a great uh, segue. So I don't know if you remember from the astrophotography show when I started off, I said that my journey began with pointing a nifty fifty at the sky and doing a long exposure and taking a shot to see what happens. And you may recall that it turned out terribly, mm -hmm. right? Um, but that was my beginning of my journey and it got better from there. So oddly enough, that's how I started in macro as well. Um, I had never held a macro uh, lens in my hand before. I had never taken a macro image. I happened to watch a YouTube video where a gentleman demonstrated what's called the reverse lens macro technique, um, where you can take a lens and literally essentially flip it in reverse and look through it. Um, I don't know if you've actually, if you guys have tried that before, but um, it works amazingly well. And and this guy was so crude about it. He literally just held the lens up to the front of his camera body because obviously you couldn't affix it to the camera body. He literally held it in place like this and snapped the photo. And uh, so I went out on the deck. I tried the same thing and uh, got a surprisingly good video, uh, uh, image just of a small insect. Just as an aside, there are actually adapters out there that, well, that allow you to reverse. That's the lenses. next thing. Yeah, there we go. I have one. So, so, oh, so that's. I just wanted to say that's where the journey began. Yep. Um, there are adapters that you can do that are much less technical than this one, but I'm going to kind of jump to what this one is. Um, this one essentially goes on the on the front of your camera body. This attaches to the front of your lens. Now, remember, everything's in reverse. So sorry, this attaches to the rear of your lens. The front is now on the camera body. But this now allows full aperture control and focus control of the lens as well when it's in reverse uh -huh. um, because of this cable uh, that we have here that essentially makes this a smart adapter. Um, there's dumb Just adapters. Just for reference, Jason, what does something yeah. like that cost? This here, I want to say this was a little over 100 bucks when I got it. I bought it at Henry's. Um, I, I tried it initially without the um, with this type of adapter. The one limitation you have, as you know, when you shut your camera off, your camera returns back to a wide open aperture or your lens, um, depending on the camera, of course, and the lens. But yeah. the ones that I had would return to a wide open aperture. So to do this reverse lens technique, when I popped that lens off, well, it was wide open and my depth of field was razor thin. There, of course, is the trick where you can stop down um, I believe you hold your finger on the depth of field preview button as you take the lens off when the camera is off and that will lock it in whatever aperture you were in. I didn't like doing that because my worry was I potentially could do something bad to my camera. So I don't typically recommend that technique, but a lot of people do it. Um, but I went with this and 
this worked for quite a while. I was just using that nifty 50 in reverse and, and it, uh, it certainly satisfied me enough to give me that initial interest in macro. Um, but from there, I went to something definitely more dedicated. Um, a 100 mil f2.8 macro uh, is, is probably one of the best macro lenses I think you can buy. Um, Canon's released a new version of it for the RF mount, but um, but the one that I have has been around a long, long time, and it's a it's a workhorse for that. It's a fantastic lens. I it's used a really it too, it's, and it's, it's great for something. it's great for portraits. It's great for uh, you know, and actually, it's a great all around lens. Yeah, yeah. My comment Neowise photo that I captured last year was with the one hundred mil. Go figure. So, um, but as a macro lens, it is it is fantastic, and it yeah. and it achieves that one to one magnification that really defines macro. Right. So just, just before we move on there, can you mm -hmm. explain one-to-one -to, -one to people who might Yeah, not of course, know? for sure. So um, let's take the sensor size on my camera. I believe it's a 36 millimeter wide by 24 millimeters tall. Um, if full frame I, sensor for full frame sensor, for yeah. full, full frame sensor. So if I was to take a picture of a postage stamp, let's say that is exactly 36 millimeters wide by 24 millimeters tall, at the closest focus distance I can achieve with that lens and camera, it would perfectly fill the frame of my image, edge to edge, top and bottom. That's mm -hmm. a one to one magnification. Um, so if you get a two to one magnification, well now I can literally fill my frame with half of that stamp. And that's how close I can get at that closest. It's all about the closest focusing distance that you can achieve with that lens. Um, the strongest lens that I have is actually something called the Canon MPE 65. That'll achieve a five to one magnification. And if you it's a crazy throw on, lens. it's a bonkers mm -hmm. lens. And if you throw yep. on um, uh, some extension tubes, uh, you can, and also some teleconverters. I've actually gotten it down to a 10 to one magnification. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, so, uh, and uh, that's, that's now where you're, um, you can literally see, um, I have a, uh, an image, I, I don't have it up at this point, but you can actually see surface tension of the water when it's touching something else and pulling the water a little bit, like you can get down to that finite level. So, but it's there's trade-offs yeah. going that that extreme, um, but we'll mm -hmm. talk about that after as well. So, yeah. Um, what else can I show you now? Um, well, what do you want to go to next, Brian? <laughs> there's so many different well, aspects of this. So, talk so we've, we've talked about the basic gear. I mean, there, there are multiple macro yeah. lens is available for all systems. Yeah. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be the Canon EF 100 millimeter L lens. Yeah. There, there's a non L version of that lens. Yeah. There are multiple other Canon macro lenses from the amazing 180 F 3.5, which mm -hmm. is, is a standard for a lot of wildlife macro people yeah. to uh, there's a 28 millimeter M mount macro lens that's an f3.5 mm -hmm. that has lights built into the end of it so oh, that's fantastic. just from the canon system there's also yeah. nikon and sony they've all got macro lenses too yeah so yeah. if macro is something you really want to get into there are dedicated macro lenses at all price points yeah for sure and, yeah. and like jason showed you can also just use a reversing ring um, there are also other things uh, my personal macro journey started with something called a dcr 250 which is a little filter that you actually put on the front of your lens and it gives you crazy magnification and brings your focusing closer. So I used to use that. That's how I started with a kit lens. Mm -hmm. That's how I started doing macro was with something like that. And again, it's about a hundred dollar solution. Yeah. Much, much cheaper but, than, uh, yeah. so yeah. yeah so if, if it's something you want to experiment with and not necessarily get a dedicated macro lens, there are solutions yeah. as well yeah. That, yeah. that don't cost a ton of money. Uh, that there, that, that there is speaking of the of, of the dedicated ones. That's the MPE sixty five that we were talking about. So, um, okay. it as uh, a telescoping. Stopping. Yeah, yeah. So That's I can crazy. get down to, uh, and there's my my markings on here from a one x to a five x all in one lens. Yeah, that's a crazy one. Which is crazy. Yeah, so, it's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. So what's yeah. that reverse adapter called? Uh, it's just you know a reversing what? ring. Just yeah, a reversing, reversing ring. ring. Yeah, yeah. And you can yeah. get ones that'll support AF or ones that only do it, MF. Yeah. Autofocus, manual focus for anyone who doesn't know. Yeah. But then as, as you get into higher magnifications, you also need certain specialized equipment as well. Yeah. So um, yeah. why don't we show some one-to-one -one kind of photos first? Sure. Yeah. Just so that people can get an idea of one-to-one. -one and. Did you want me to put one up, Brian? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, put it okay. up there okay. and I'll, uh, I'll give you this. Nice, Jessica. 
can't, ooh, Jessica has a 35 with lights on the ends too, right? That's yep, cool. Yeah, the 35 one. Yep. Okay, so yeah, there that's we go. the EFS mount, I think. All right, let's uh, let's give Jason the whole screen here. Solo layout. Oh yeah. Jeez. There we go. <laughs> nice. Man. Yeah, so, not, so this here, um, this was captured with the the 100 mil uh, f 2.8. Uh, so a one-to-one -one magnification, and this is a bee uh, resting on the on the end of a of a small branch. Um, this was actually captured at Rockwood Conservation Area, and I was just out for a walk in the morning, and uh, I love water drops uh, on on just about anything, and yeah. um, so I was looking at small flowers and, and getting images, and then I saw this little guy. Uh, it was quite cool, so it was still in very much a resting state, and uh, so this is a this is a one-to-one -one, uh, here. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, just uh, how close do you actually have to be to the subject with the lens? Um, you know what? I mean, with that 100 mil, you can um, you can go quite far back if you want to. Uh, but I can get down to I want to say it's four. Uh, is it four or five centimeters? I can get from the subject um, with that mm -hmm. lens. So yeah, okay, in this uh, in this case I here, it's I what, got 12 centimeters from the sensor. Yeah. If I remember correctly, from that lens. Okay. Yeah, my, my uh, MPE 65, depending on the um, the magnification I'm using, I can get right down to just a, a few centimeters. Um, so That's it's cool. uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But so this is this is one of my personal favorite. Uh, and this was done with ambient light. There was no flash. Uh, that's why it's a little on the grainier side because um, I had it on auto auto ISO so it could adjust as need be um, and just uh, fired off a few shots. So that's that's definitely one of my faves. Yeah. Man. Only photographers carry about noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only photographers carry yeah, about I noise. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm carrying uh, less and less about noise, let me tell you. Um, yeah, so that's so that's a good example of a of a one to one. I can show one more actually really oh, quick. I got one popped up here oh, while you're you searching ahead, yeah. for yours. Yeah. Uh, again, it's a one to one with the one hundred mil. I just really like the colors. Oh beautiful. Yeah. That's a good one. Just a tiny little purple flower. Yeah. I sprayed some water on it. Usually when I'm when I was doing specific macro stuff, I actually had a little squirt bottle in my bag so that I could add water drops to anything. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Handy little thing to have. You can pick them up at the dollar store. Yeah. yeah. And you can add water drops to anything. I put that on everything. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah. Gotta do it. All right, Jason, go for it. Yeah, I got another one here. There yep. we go. So right. this year, mm. yeah, this is a damselfly. Um, cool. From end to end, I think that's probably no more than an inch long. Um, and uh, I absolutely love it because you can get right in there on the eyes. The detail that you get is just pretty amazing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's awesome. Um, this is definitely one of the arguments to be made for a higher resolution camera. I mean, I, I'm not one to, I finally stopped. Um, chasing the features you know i finally grew up and i, I no longer chase uh, new camera features but i have to say the 45 megapixels on the r5 would be lovely um from a macro standpoint because of the just the yes. way it gives you from a cropping standpoint right um yeah not at all necessary but well, that would be kind of a nice to have yeah yeah so that's uh that nice. was another one-to-one -one there yeah yeah nice now if you want to jump uh if I may, actually, I might as well just keep going with a couple of shots here, Brian, there, yep. um, to talk about equipment and the actual setup in the field. So one of the things I'll show you here, um, I'm going to turn this back on, just jumping around a little bit. There yep, we go. Okay. There we go. So, so this this is a common yeah. setup that I would use. Um, sorry, actually, this is this is one of the more extreme ones. Sorry, this one here. Um, <laughs> this is, I have in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had two images. I had two images of my setup, and actually, I jumped to the wrong one. But this one here is what I would use for snowflakes. Um, oh, nice! And uh, so, what you're looking at here is, um, I have, um, I'll have a teleconverter. I believe I have a teleconverter on the front of that, plus three extension tubes, plus the MPE <laughs> 65, extended to, extended to five times magnification, and with the ring flash. So, one of the big big trade-offs of extreme macro here like something like this is that your light loss is significant with all of that distance um you, you're you um light it light is a precious commodity so flash is an absolute must um and when shooting something like a snowflake 
and I, and I have to give the guy uh, a plug, of course, it's Don Kamarechka, who I think is the master of snowflake photography. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he, he'll fire many, many images. He'll do anything where I think 25 to 50 images of a snowflake and he'll do it in as fast as the camera can capture them. So you have to have an external power source for that flash to keep up. So that's what you're seeing in that shot. So when I do snowflake photography, I'll have all of that in my hand and I will be resting my left hand kind of on the side of the, the table or wherever I'm, I'm trying to photograph the snowflakes. The, um, my, my thumb and my index finger will be holding the end of that ring flash. And then of course I'm holding the camera against my face <laughs> with the other hand and moving slightly back and forth as I'm firing burst images, just to try to get all the, um, the focal planes throughout that snowflake, which you can imagine how, how, how small that is. It's a good um, thing us Canadians live in igloos, so it's cold yeah, enough to have snowflakes. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is probably the most hardcore um, macro setup that I would use uh, for something incredibly small. And um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It weighs a lot, but um, how much? How many pounds? Uh, that there, I think that's got to be <laughs> seven or eight pounds, probably mm -hmm. in total. Yeah, because wow. it's a heavy it's a heavy lens as well. So it's uh, yeah. And then the battery pack I just kind of have in my pocket, you know, so yeah. it's, uh, yeah, you're kind of lumbering around the neighbors look at you like, what's that guy doing? But yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. No, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, Do you want me to keep going, Brian? I have all yeah, kinds go of, for it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No. Um, why, why don't we pivot really quickly? So that was, that was kind of an extreme setup there. Um, I'm going to show another one here. Um, I'll keep doing this back and forth that quick so this is now a, a what i would call a studio macro setup so i kind of showed you what i do outside this is something that i've i've done literally in what i call my man cave um water drop refraction photography is a lot of fun um literally dropping water from above into a, a pool of water you can see in this case here um this setup was quite neat i just had a piece of cloth at the top here that i kept dunking water in. i don't have an actual dedicated water dropper so i would just continually soak this piece of cloth water drops would fall from that this is a laser and a special type of um, remote trigger called a myops and the water drop would trip the laser and the time that it took to fall to the water it would trigger the flash and trigger the shutter this of course is an external flash and i used um Forgive me, I'm, I'm forgetting the name Snoot. of it. Thank Snoot. you. Yeah. Uh, to try to direct the light a certain way. Uh, and all of it would kind of come together and you can just kind of see on here uh, what I what I was capturing. And I want to see if the picture comes up next. There you go. That's Go that's on. the type of thing that um, I was able to capture that. That's so that, that's a mirrored, um, basically a mirrored image of the, the, the earth that was behind it there. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. wild, man. That's nice. Yeah. So now that's, that that's a, well. that's a true, um, st a studio macro setup. And, uh, I have all kinds of equipment that I use for that sort of thing from, um, I showed the guys this earlier, you know, I'll even make something like this, which is just a, a wood frame that I built that allows me to set up the shot on the inside of it. I can have lighting arms off the top, illuminating it from a, the side or below. Uh, it's, uh, you kind of come up with crazy ideas with macro. A little bit of the mad scientist in you comes out. Yeah. 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 That's wild. Yeah. Blown away. Yeah. You know, a Blown lot of fun away. with macro. There's, and it's, it's not all bugs and it's not all, you know, flowers or flowers. Yeah. There's, there's so many different things you can do. Yeah. And just before we continue on, I'm going to show one that's a little bit different that I showed Jason and he actually loved. So mm -hmm. and I think some other guys have seen this one before. This is a macro one that I actually shot. That, that is a macro yeah. shot. Trippy, man. What is it? That is actually, I pointed the macro lens with a ring light on the end into a oh. mirror. So that's oh. actually looking down the barrel of a macro lens. That's uh, crazy. For okay. a macro okay. shot. Oh, that's uh, your aperture okay. blades then. Uh, yep, those yeah. are your aperture blades. And I got the you. Lights, you can see the different colors of the lights because of the different coatings on the different layers of glass. Damn, so, that's crazy. That's inception, man. That's trippy. So that's, that's a macro okay. shot of a macro lens. Yeah. Looking down wow. the barrel of the lens. So I wow. just pointed at the mirror with the ring light on the end. Mind nice. blown. 
Yeah, that's amazing. I need a so lens just, now. Damn. Yeah, mm. and you know some of the some of the best subject matter is just around your house. Like literally, yep. uh, mm. um, I was saying to the to the guys earlier. Like I have, it's kind of off 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 um, camera here as well. But I have kind of my macro goodie box where I I just collect things. So um, old motherboards, you know, can make fascinating subjects. Um, of course, rocks, uh, feathers, uh, seashells make uh, mm. make it interesting subjects as well. Yeah. Um, all I used, of these I used to make cityscapes out of staples. Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. I they mean, it's look um, like skyscrapers. Right, right, right. They take on a whole new, um, a whole new meaning when you can look at them up close. Um, mm -hmm. When every year when we close the cottage, um, I have this tradition. I walk around outside of our site and I pick up leaves. And what I'll do is I'll put them inside of a book and I'll I'll press them and allow them to dry over the next few weeks. Because every year I like to try to do a macro shot with uh, with the leaves that i collect and one of the things that i wanted to try this one specific year was water drop refraction um, uh, photography so similar to the the moon uh, the earth shot that i showed you there um, mm -hmm. i'm going to show you another one real quick that is a direct result of that okay and here we go so something like this there you go so again this was mm -hmm. this was a a studio macro yeah. setup, uh, similar to what I'd showed you earlier there with that box. I use that to, to kind of illuminate things. So these are just several leaves that I collected at the cottage. Um, it's actually positioned on top of an iPad screen. So there is actually a reflection at the bottom of this here. Okay. And behind it, I had an LED light illuminating from behind. And then I used a, a, a syringe essentially to place each water drop on the bottom of that leaf. <laughs> <laughs> so you very, very carefully just get the water started coming at the end of your, your dropper, essentially, just touching the bottom of the leaf, and it'll grab onto that. And then you Have just... Have you ever tried, uh, what is it, glycol, I think? Uh, glycerin. glycerin. Glycerin, yes. Yeah, um, I, I did. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of impartial. I find water works as well, but I, I think that does give it a thicker um, substance, and I think you could probably form more rounded yeah, they, they yeah they hold better and so in this yep. case here you do see a bit of a droop to these and, and and glycerin may have actually helped with that but it's it's really neat because you, you can see the leaf behind it kind of refracting through yeah. it so yep. it's um it's, it's a lot of fun and and this is i mentioned earlier about focus stacking so i'm, I'm kind of going all over the map here a little bit today but one of the tech one of the drawbacks i should say of, of macro is that you typically have a very uh, thin depth of field and the stronger the magnification you go so like on that that mpe 65 when i get to a five times magnification it's it's literally razor thin focus stacking is the only way i can create an image with that lens a, a single image would be useless so something like this here i, I believe i did this at about a two to one and i i want to i keep going, testing my memory here but i think i took close to 50 60 images for this yeah. one here uh, starting with the closest point. And if I recall, I want to say the closest point was right around here on the tip of this leaf. And then the furthest point was way back here. Now that was only a matter of maybe a couple of centimeters, but it took me, like I said, 60 to 70 shots to get everything in focus from front to back in individual frames. And then I took that into Photoshop. And I, I do have a video on my YouTube channel where I, I, I did kind of a tutorial on how I did this on two individual yeah. grains of salt, as an example. <laughs> and, and that was at a five times magnification. And it actually took uh, a number of shots. And I actually go through the process of how Photoshop, it does a pretty good job of focus stacking that, but not perfect. So there's a lot of manual editing you have to do afterwards to get do, everything. Do you have the salt shot? I... I'm intrigued. Salt, salt. You know what? If you guys talk for a minute, I will find the salt shot. So okay, so what I'll, I'll, do, I'll pop a drop shot up quick. While, yeah, you go while ahead, you're guys. searching. Just another water drop shot. So are you slider. using a slider for your focus stacking then? Yeah, you know what? I can show you that real fast. So that just to give people an idea of what the gear go. is needed. Yeah, yeah for, the, for, for the sure. crazy macro stuff here. Yeah, I'm not as organized tonight, guys. Am I? I'm, I'm, uh... <laughs> um, that's, we're kind of bouncing around a little bit too. So yeah. Okay. So this, thank you for asking, too, Andre. So th this is um, this is a slider, a macro slider, a slide rail, I guess they call it. And you made a very good point there. So 
when I started that image at the closest point and I needed to move through it from front to back, you have to have a way to do it in a controlled manner. And that's where a slide rail like this comes into play. And so if you can see here, there's a little, little dial that I'm turning here. And what's happening is this slider is actually moving in and out. Very, very fine, fine movements. So you'll set all this up. You'll take a shot using a remote trigger because you don't want to be touching your camera. And then you'll turn this dial ever so slightly and it'll move this a fraction of a millimeter forward. You'll take another shot. You'll turn mm -hmm. it a bit. You'll take another shot. And you will repeat this process until you see on screen that I finally got to the back of that image. No matter how long it takes, you'll, you'll just keep doing it. So that's why I think the, long, the biggest one I ever did was over 100 images, which, yeah. is, which is kind of bonkers. And uh, um, that one, I believe I'll be able to show you too. I do have that one. So, uh, But that's a focusing rail. These come in manual flavors. There's also one, can't think of the name of the company. I, I don't own it, but it's an auto, it's a it's a, a motorized one that I know Don Kamarechka uses it in his case because some of his, I believe he will do thousands of images in certain cases when he gets down to the really microscopic level. Mm -hmm. And that takes all the kind of the, the wiggle out of it. It does it perfectly. So, so and if you happen to use an Oh, go ahead, Evans. I'm assuming that with the way you're talking about the, the focus with the rail, um, you are manually focusing, right? A hundred percent. Yes. I never, ever use, um, never. Uh, <laughs> now you raise a, a good question, though. I, in the studio, I will always use manual focus. In the field, funny enough, lately, with, um, I, t I was telling Brian earlier, I've had a whole change of heart in how I do macro in the field. And I used to always use external flashes. I would uh, quite often use manual focus. I would shoot in burst mode to, again, try to get a lot of images and stack them later. This summer, I, I kind of sh shifted gears a little bit. I don't use any external flash. I will use uh, just ambient light, auto ISO, so that the camera can flex with uh, with what I'm doing. And uh, and actually, I've started using auto focus. And I think the only time I would I would be supportive of that, I think, is if you have a dedicated macro lens with a really fast focusing system. And the 100 mil f2.8 is actually a really fast focusing lens. And especially if you lock it. Yeah. Use that and, focus lock. Yes. And, and, and restrict its movement a bit, right? To just yeah. close a range. And um, it's actually been doing a great job. And so I've kind of, again, slowed my pace down a little bit. I'm not doing the burst shots anymore. Focus on the eye of the insect or whatever it is that I'm shooting. And, uh, and the autofocus has actually been keeping up. So there's two, two schools of thought on that one for sure. Cool. Okay, so you can keep, I'm going to try to find that uh, okay, so slot while you're talking there. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll pop another image up just because yeah. I know people like to see images. So yeah. there we go. Hmm. That's uh, oh, wow. just walking around a local park, handheld macro shot. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not awesome. much of a studio macro guy. I, I prefer the run and gun style of macro. That's mm. just what I like to do. I that's have spider? done studio macro too, but yeah, that's spider. Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's that's with that Canon lens. And then mm. uh, if we go this way, three, mm. three water so drops. Did, did you place the did you place the water? Those were actually there. It was wow. after, it was in the oh, really? they, they just landed like that. Really? Yep. And then this is from a pine tree. Again, nice. just walking around with a macro lens, looking for little things. And then I, I love finding textures with macro as yeah. well. Yeah. So old textures stuff like that and, that, and that. and then cactus, top down on a cactus. Mm, cool. Just lit it. Interesting. I actually, I used to go to uh, Centennial Park Conservatory a lot. Uh, back before mm. COVID, and it was mm -hmm. a great place to spend an afternoon shooting macro mm. stuff. Yeah, between the bugs, and you the don't you don't have to worry that. about wind because it's indoors. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry yeah. about rain. So even yeah. in January, when it's minus thirty outside, you can go shoot macro all day and be comfortable. Mm. Cool. And really come up with some cool abstract kind of stuff. Funny thing is, I was, I was just looking at that lens this afternoon. The one hundred. The one hundred f two point eight macro. The EF, just, uh, the L version, or the yeah, the EF, the L version. The EF L version, yeah, the L version has IS. The non-L version doesn't have IS. Yeah. So that, that's something to consider as well. 
Yeah. Okay, I did find it, Brian. You did? Okay. I did. I did. So here I will. Go for it. I'll, Let's, so uh, first first off, yeah, I'm going to show talk you. about so, the process. <laughs> okay, so two grains of salt, right? Um, this here, I don't know if you can see it. This is an yeah. LED flashlight. Okay, so there's Put my hand. The screen. And there's, there's the size of the LED flashlight. Just tiny little thing. And I did not use this for illumination of any kind. I, I wanted... What I was looking for was an interesting reflective surface to photograph these two grains of salt on, right? So <laughs> I kind of liked the lens of this because the way I had my, my setup, I had the camera coming at it like this. I had a um, external flash pointing at it from the opposite side. And my theory was that if this flash kind of entered this lens, it might bounce around on the reflective surface inside, creating kind of a, a, a lighting from below the grains of salt. This is my mad scientist theory anyways. Um, <laughs> so that was my setup. This thing balancing on its end, pair of tweezers. I placed two grains of salt on the top of this thing and had a remotely triggered flash firing towards me this way. So this is the shot here. Oh. <laughs> nah, that's cool. So, Jeez, man. so that, ice cube. I mean, looks ice cube. like ice cubes. Looks like yep. ice cubes, right? Yeah. But yeah, that is too... Gonna, that, that really looks like... Ice cubes. If you didn't say yeah. it was grains yes. of salt, I would have thought it was ice cubes. And that's actually how, when I shared this to social media, that's actually how I teed it up. I said, you know, um, ice cubes on a silver platter? No. <laughs> uh, it's actually two grains of salt. And um, and I had uh, so many, yeah, and I had so many questions. Yeah, uh, like the texturing and the flashlight even, because it's kind of yeah. scratched up the lens. Yep. Um, wow. You can see and what I thought was really neat is that it reflected down into it a little bit. And then another reflection below because it had multiple layers to the, obviously the, the, the film that was on the top of the flashlight. So that one there, um, I, I want to say again, somewhere between 25 to 50 images from front to back of the grain of salt. Wow. And I still didn't nail it. I mean, there's still a little bit of blurriness at the top, but if you're, if you're interested in how I made something like that, when, when Brian shares our, our YouTube channels later, I do have a, actually, this is one of the videos that I have created was a how to on all the equipment I use for it. And then the technique on capturing it and also editing it. I go right through it all. So, nice. um, yeah, so Solid. it's an interesting, it's an interesting one. And yeah, it's what about a 40 minute video? It right? is. Uh, and like, I, I think I everything. lose, I think I lose people pretty early on, <laughs> but, but the dedicated ones, they stick around. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. That's, it's Man. a good tutorial for sure. Yeah. I Blown away, man. Blown That's away. That one. Um, why don't I, um, if you don't mind me continuing to share some, Brian, I'll, I'll share, share yep. another one. Just we, on, we the, on the topic of focus stacking, yeah. Uh, if you happen to own an M6 Mark, M6 Mark II like Andre and I do, mm. it actually does focus stacking in camera. Right, yeah. The R6 and the R5 do it as well. Yep. Uh, I was heartbroken that the R, the R does not because uh, I just would like to have given it a try. But again, that's going to work if it's on a tripod. Um, yeah, it apparently uh, works pretty well too. Oh, I yeah. haven't tried it yet, but I've seen yeah. videos and it apparently works pretty well. It, you know what? It's the same thing. You, you set the closest point, you set the furthest point, you tell it how many shots you want to get in between, and yep. then you just let it go. And yep, it does it automatically. It just marches yeah. the focal that's right. plane across the image. And yeah. Now you it can doesn't stack it for you though. Right. You have I've to heard do that the stacking on your own. Yeah, I saw that Nikon, certain Nikon models will do the stack in camera. Um, okay. But uh, but yeah, I think, I mean, I, I prefer to, I, I would prefer to have that control after the fact anyways, but. I'd, I'd prefer but to do the stacking on something with a little more processing power. For sure, for sure, yeah. yeah. But, and it is possible to do it handheld though. Uh, you know, I never ever thought of hand holding um, a focus stack. To me, it was always something that uh, just logically to me seemed like it should be done on a tripod. But again, it was Don Kamarachi that, that kind of opened my eyes to that, uh, you can absolutely do it handheld. You just, it's, it's a technique thing and you have to be aware of it when you're taking a shot of whatever it is to try to just maintain your, 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 uh, your angle of attack. Um, yeah. when looking at that subject and making sure you keep that consistent and Photoshop is pretty amazing at, at kind of making little corrections. But, um, this one here is an extreme magnification one as well. It's, um, uh, I was sitting in here one day, uh, I actually was doing the dishes and, um, inside of a, a clear glass uh, cup was some soapy bubbles. And I just like the way the bubbles looked on the inside of the glass, you know? So what do I do? I grab a water bottle, fill it with some soapy water, run down to the man cave, right? Um, <laughs> and what I ended up doing was I'd shake this thing like crazy and it would make very, very fine 
bubbles inside of that that uh, that water bottle. And I would use that five to one magnet magnification from the outside of the bottle, looking in on it with lighting it, it behind. And the result okay. was actually pretty, pretty shocking. And so this is uh, the result of that. Now, this is a an incredibly small section of that water bottle because uh, but what I thought was so interesting, if you go into where they intersect with each other, you can see the geometric shapes that form. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Um, That's crazy. It's just it's just fascinating, and and you can actually see there was structure to the to the um, behind it as well. And you said that's at five to one. This is a five to one. Yeah. Damn. So so just so, just curious because the bubbles would be changing constantly. Yep. How how did you you had like, to act fast? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say you'd have to stack that really fast. Yeah, and it was uh, a ton of trial and error, um, but they weren't. You know what they what will happen is when and if you watch the bubbles will be kind of static for a little bit and then they'll start to pop and then they'll change and morph. But yeah, the merge there's, and yeah. There's a little bit of time there right in the beginning that I was able to get them fairly stationary and it wasn't too bad, but okay. I just like the, uh, the the geometric shapes in the background. Uh, I thought that that turned out really well. It's yeah. neat. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Wow. <laughs> and let's see if I can pull up another one since we're and uh, uh, sticking to the theory of things that you have around the house. Um, well, you're doing that. I'm going to do that as well. Uh, I've queued up another one here. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go back and forth here a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to take this one away and we'll come back to it. There you go. I jumped okay. the gun. Yeah, so go there. In simple items found around the house. It's that's just staples. Staples on a DVD. That's fantastic. <laughs> Look at that, eh? <laughs> yeah. And then I used I used a blue light to just give it the color. But yeah, that's just staples on a DVD. Matrix. Then, like, yeah, Matrix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I go that way, mm -hmm. that's staples with a rock in the background. Right, right, right. And again, just different colored lighting. So just yeah. playing around a long time ago, back when I was first starting out. Yeah. Just playing around and trying different things. Yeah. It doesn't have to be there fancy. Just experiment and don't be afraid to experiment. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And those yeah, are like gonna... six year old shots, but they Sorry, were still right? fun to make at the time. Okay, Shout out to Staples, your sponsor in today's video. <laughs> 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 that would have been timely, wouldn't it? So that would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I queued up a couple here so we can do them in a row, Brian. So I won't have Beautiful. to. Okay, okay. So, so this one here, I had two watch ones, but so this is the inside of a watch. Um, awesome. And, and, and you know what? I didn't even know that watches had jewels in them until I started doing macro photography. So, you know, something, something like this. Um, it was actually, it was a watch, since you guys are Brampton residents, you'll know Watch World and Bramley City Center. Yep. Um, yep. I, I walked into their store one day simply asking, you know, do you, where do you, where do you get your parts for watches? I, I'm a macro photographer. I'd love to take some photographs of gears and I had different ideas. And, and in the end, they ended up donating five small watches to me that uh, no longer work. They had them sitting in the back room and they, they made wonderful subjects. Um, so this one here, again, is probably 40 to 50 images focus stacked. And uh, that's the end result of that. Great. Another one here. This soap bubble macro, um, oh. which I think is a lot of fun to try. And yep. 100%. Um, so this one here is interesting because this is very telling. It, it kind of really it describes itself how I did it. You can actually see my lens. So that's the, the, the leading edge of the MPE 65 in the image. Yeah, you can see it there. Yep. This was shot on again an iPad screen, and I had two diffused flash, uh, external flashes, kind of leaning against each other over top of the iPad, and so what I would do is I would kind of lean underneath the two diffused flashes with a straw that I had just dipped into soapy water. I would blow a little bubble onto the iPad screen very quickly pulling away and firing the shot because what I was finding is that this beautiful patterning that would happen in the bubble would all drop to the bottom. And so you had to do it. Then I'd have to wipe the screen down, do another, you know, I probably ingested a, you know, an alarming amount of dish soap that day, but, um, 
but it was a lot of fun and I had some really, really good results with it. So soap bubble macro is something that, uh, and, and you can do it with flashes. You could also do it with um, a really powerful LED flashlight. That's another way you can mm -hmm. illuminate. It doesn't have to be uh, with a flash. It can be a, a constant lighting as well. And then the last one, remember I mentioned surface tension. So I, I wanted yep. to show this one. It's one of my favorites too. So this is at a five to one magnification. This is a thistle that you would find when you're walking through the woods that always gets stuck to your pants. This is <laughs> this is the very end of one of those tiny little, uh, I don't even know what you call them, forgive me. Um, but uh, yeah, well, uh, the, the end of the burr there. And you can yeah. see there's four of them there. This thing of course was quite massive and I just had it touching a little bit of water that I had in a, in a bowl. And as I pulled away, I was able to capture the surface tension between the water and the burr. Yeah. That's wow, awesome. Man. Yeah. Love so that. you can, again, you're seeing things that the human eye can't see, uh, right? And that's what I, I find really fascinating about macro. It just um, takes you into a new world, especially when it comes to insects. You get to get to see how they go about their day. Yeah. There you go. So that's, that's the ones great. that I wanted to share, guys. Um, great, man. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know what else I can say about it. Where, other do, you than get, it. where do you get your ideas from? Where you just oh. think of them? Oh, they just come to mind. Yeah, you come, know what? Right? Yeah, when I'm walking around, if I see something, um, <laughs> insects are a funny thing, right? That's probably my favorite thing to photograph is insects, and I find them very calming when I'm walking along the water, and they tend to just go about their day. They really don't care about you. If you leave them alone, they'll just continue to do their thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've, I've, I have a new appreciation for them. I used to be terrified of spiders. I now let them crawl on me. I have no issue with them whatsoever. And mm -hmm. um, I just find, uh, again, they, they, they don't allow the complications of our world to interfere with what, right. what they do, right? And that's what I love about them, I guess. Um, right. But, you know, uh, the other thing I do occasionally, if I happen to find a dead insect, is I will pick it up and put it in a little Tupperware container and bring it home, much to the horror of my family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they must be used to it by now. They, they yeah, matter of fact, I, I, have a, I have a bumblebee that I'm going to photograph later sitting right up there. So um, Beautiful. Yeah, and, awesome. I, and I, I find them in um, you know our shed in the spring and stuff like that. I mean, uh, it, anything to get the photo. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Jeez. So that's uh, so. The only other thing I can touch on is um, maybe software. Um, Photoshop. We've mentioned software, Photoshop many yeah. times for focus stacking. There's dedicated programs as well. There's one called um, Helicon Focus, which I've also mm -hmm. used. And what I like about it, when you're working with the individual layers, it has a really interesting UI, where it'll actually, if I click on a spot that's blurry, it will reference the frame where it was sharp type of thing and allow me to correct it. it, it it's a little more intuitive than what Photoshop is. They both have their place, but um, it, it's an interesting program as well. And then that YouTube video that I did on the, the grains of salt, I believe I used both. I did a quick demo of Photoshop and on how you would do it in Helicon Focus. So yeah, so you can see those as well. Do you have a preference for either program? They both seem to have their uses. Yeah, um, yeah Photoshop, I think Photoshop probably yields the better result, I, I, even though it's a lot more tedious because the way I do it is I, I bring all the images in as layers. I will do a focus. Sorry, first I'll duplicate the layers. Yep. I will stack one of the duplicated sets to give me a, what Photoshop perceives as the ideal focus stacked image. Yep. And then I will reference back to all the other layers from that uh, the other duplicate set and look for the parts where Photoshop missed. and that's the part that takes a lot of time because you're cycling back and forth from layer to layer just to say, hey, could I have done any better than Photoshop? And and yeah, in some cases you could, and you'll mask out um, the bad spot and you'll bring in the, in the good detail. So, but it can take hours. It, it's uh, the longest one I did, like I said, was I believe close to about eight hours of processing in total. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Man, that's so, that is, that is commitment, man. <laughs> crazy patience. Uh, yeah. But, I, patience. but you know what? That's what I like about it. I, I really enjoy that, the technical side of capturing it and also just the, the technique of the edit and the final result, of course. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love it. Mm -hmm. I love the passion. 
And you know what's interesting is uh, it's there's a lot of parallels to some of the other photography that we do too, right? There's a lot of stacking and astrophotography, which we talked mm -hmm. about before. Um, so it it all it all kind of comes together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've only ever done one focus stack, and it just it wasn't for me. No, it, yeah. it's not my thing. Not yeah. my thing at all. I prefer I like I don't mind the shallow depth of field. Like yeah. I had that black and white photo on the screen there. I don't mind that shallow yeah. depth of field and the more abstract look. That's just yeah. again, it's it's a personal taste thing. That's neither one's right or wrong. Yeah, and it's it's it has a lot of applications too, right? Like, um, and this is completely going off topic because it's not a macro thing, but it is about focus stacking. It's very useful in landscape photography uh, mm -hmm. with digital, where if you if you want to get that foreground interest of some rocks that's immediately in front of you with a with a sixteen mil lens, but I want to get that background in focus as well it's virtually impossible to do unless you you push it to f22 or something but then you introduce diffraction and it, it you, you might not get the sharpness so it gives you that ability to to nail the the sharpest aperture yeah. of your lens f8 f9 let's say and do uh and I, and I would typically focus on three points the rocks in front of me middle ground and then the horizon and then yep. you, you'll you blend the three and yeah so that was a little aside there but focus stacking has its many yeah, oh, focus stacking many definitely benefits. has Mm -hmm. applications yeah yeah hmm. yeah i'm trying to think if there's anything else i could show you here i know in one of my photos we had the ring flash so of course you know um so a little equipment tip i guess uh if you're a canon shooter canon certainly sells ring flashes like that probably somewhere close to 500 bucks i if i had to guess um i, 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 I bought a my Eki, i think it's called yeah i have one of those it cost me 40 dollars. right young yeah. newell is a fraction of the price. Yeah. So that's another brand that I try to recommend anytime I can. Um, I have a couple of their speed lights. I think the speed lights were 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah, and that um, was good. Go yeah, they're, is they're, good. they're fantastic. There's, there's great companies out there. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the only reason why personally I would recommend the Godox over the Young Eo mm. is um, if you change systems, you, your Godox right. will, will move on to your new system. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Godox, all the Godox stuff is integrated. So every Godox incredible. flash works with the with their triggers and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah for, for the price point, Young Nuo is pretty good. It's uh, they're oh, almost yeah. they're almost burner flashes. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's you know that's what I started yeah. learning flash on was an yeah, Young which flash, is, which so. is kind of crazy. Um, yeah. The other thing I always like to point out is this little thing here. I mean, you start to get really crafty when you're doing macro because you've only got two hands and you, you need to hold stuff. Uh, this is, I believe they call this a third hand tool and um, very, very helpful in, in keeping things stationary. So I will quite often set up a shot. I've actually had this completely submerged in water, um, holding something underwater that arched out of the water. So great, great tool. Um, so they just and then, little alligator clamps on the end there? Yep, or? yep, yep. yep. Okay. And now, actually, I'll show you a little more close up here. Yeah, yeah, so that's all that is there, if you can see them. Yeah. And they're very, they articulate, they're, they're really flexible. Okay. But when you go as crazy as I did, my last thing I'll show, if I can get it out of here without, I, go, I went with something like that. Oh, jeez. So, <laughs> this, nice. this is a... Oh, it's um, painful, a, man. It's like a, it's a essentially for doing electrical uh, repairs on circuit boards and stuff like that. So this thing weighs a ton, so it doesn't go anywhere. And I can articulate all of these any which way. I, I've had them holding lighting for me. I've had them holding different objects. And uh, so that that's, again, kind of an extreme way of doing it, but you just come up with all kinds of different stuff. Yeah. Have, yeah. Um, have you ever tried doing cityscapes using circuit boards? Um. No, you know what? So you keep talking for one second. I want to show one other yeah. thing while you're so talking. So one of the things you can do, um, and I don't have I'll any take this off full screen. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Jason off full screen here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. things that you can do that I, I don't have any examples to show right now, but you can actually take an old circuit board. And because there's so many different shapes of components and stuff, if you shoot down it, it almost looks like a cityscape. And you spray a little spray mm. on deodorant in it to add some atmosphere. Yeah. And light it from the back, and it can actually look like a futuristic cityscape kind of thing Jeez, with the circuit board. I do that have sounds, a, that sounds dope. I, but, I have a couple of circuit shots. I'm going to try to find them. I, real quick I, I, I would like to see yeah. this now. I have an old computer I can take apart. Hey, nice. yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah, if you 
if you try it that way, you can you light it from the back with colored light. You can make it look like a cityscape, like a futuristic cityscape. Yeah. It's a really neat thing you can do with an old circuit board and a macro lens. And like I said, you just take a bit of the spray deodorant and you just spray it on there and it gives kind of this misty atmosphere. And you know how some of the old boards have the slats in the back for air ventilation. You have the light coming through that and it just mm, awesome awesome atmosphere to the whole thing. Damn. Yeah, okay, I found cool. I, I see I can I can act pretty fast. I found three shots of circuit boards that All I did right. that were macro. So let's let now I never ever thought of the spray deodorant though. So <laughs> I, I, I am going ideas to ideas for you. I, I love it. I love it. So, so here we go. So, there we go. So, again, um, this I is probably at about all day long. So, yeah, they're, they're fascinating. Well. And the interesting thing, they always have a lot of dust on them. So, you know, yeah. you have to really, really clean them. But I got a little tighter with that one. That's actually two individual. So these two here. Yep. Yeah. That's those two. Um, so I went from a one to one down to a five to one with that uh, it almost looks like a uh, little caramel candies <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and it then the like last one just an overhead oh, those are the caramel yeah. candies yeah 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 there baby oh yeah, yeah. but nice. um <laughs> yeah try try shooting down the board almost like a cityscape yeah, yeah. give it yeah, a try yeah, and light it backlight it and give it a try yeah. i will you've, you've got the setup to do it all so yeah yeah never even thought of yeah you know what that's taking it to another level brian that's there good. Go. Yeah, I'll yeah, spray on good. deodorant. Solves everything. That's right. That's right. Yep. Sorry. Sorry well, axe. That. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Got a response for axe. <laughs> whatever, whatever your, your brand of choice is. Not just for, for armpits. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, I mean, I think that's a lot of my goodies. Uh, I'm sure I'm le right. leaving out a lot of good stuff, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun that anybody can do. It's very accessible uh, when it comes to subject matter. Just look around your house. You'd be shocked at what you've got. And it doesn't need to be expensive. Um, just that hold reverse the fast prime in front of you. You can just yeah. hold the fast prime in front. Yeah, that's and, right. And yeah. do it that way to get started. Yeah, just try that reverse lens thing. It's it's a hoot. And yeah. uh, and and literally, like I said, that that guy that I saw do it in that YouTube video, he held the bot the the body and the lens together just with his hands, yep. just to get one shot. And there, there's actually was, a technique called free lensing where you actually take the lens off your camera and you can actually create these sliver thin depth of field images with right. lots of blur on them. And yeah, yeah, you do that with a fast prime and it's called free lensing. Right on, yeah. You just have to clean your sensor a little more when you do that. But right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's an actual thing. So anyway, um, uh, thank you, I mean, Jason. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions well, at all? Well, here. What? What? Uh, yeah. Does anybody have, have any, any questions for Jason before we issue the challenge? Do you have any goals, for, we this have any goals uh, for the uh, rest well, of the year? Yeah. Um, Talk I've, your goals. I've gone in a completely different direction. Uh, so I, we mentioned earlier that I've started to shoot film, um, which you know I've had this interest for quite a while and. Uh, um, met some great people online. Uh, I'm actually going to give a shout out to Jim because I believe he's watching and uh, he's been an, an incredible uh, support for me. Hi, Jim. On this, hi, Jim. <laughs> on, this, uh, on this new journey that I, I'm embarking on, which is learning how to shoot film, develop film, uh, do it all in my own man cave here. And my, my first purchase was a 1949 Zeiss Icon Netar, which actually, right. I'm terrible at this, guys. I should have all this ready. Oh, right. Well, you didn't know we were going to start talking about the film. This is it right here. So, as you can see, folds out. Very nice. nice. Very, very cool camera. Um, all manual. Uh, up until I was, you know, taught how to properly focus with this thing, I was purely focusing by walking off the number of paces to the, the subject matter and kind of mm -hmm. dialing it in on here. I mean, it's a whole different thing, but yeah. the the pacing, the analog process, it is incredibly refreshing. And it's for the first time in years, I've actually kind of parked the digital camera for a while, I, 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 which shocks me. But um, no, it's, it's neat kind of getting back to the roots of how we do this and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So my That's goal fun. for this year is to take an image with a film camera uh, develop it myself and uh, and do it from end to end. That that's my my personal goal. Okay. And have it be a banger. Yeah, totally. Bangers. I'll be I'll be a banger. Gotta get the bangers. You should yeah. you should nice. uh, come on. You should come on the show after you do the whole thing. And for sure, yeah, yeah. Talk, talk yeah. about the experience. Yeah, super fascinating. Yeah. 
Excellent. I didn't do as much astrophotography this year, so that is one more goal. I'm, I would like to try to get one more really good one in before we close up the cottage of either uh, Andromeda or Orion again with what I've learned since last year. Because uh, it's just, it's a constant learning process. And I'm now, oh, I could try that something a little bit differently and get a better result. So definitely going to have another go at that too. But but what about the rest of you? What, what's everyone's, uh, what's, <laughs> well, I'm gonna what's on your camera. plate? <laughs> What's that? You want to sell your camera? Oh man! Uh, Is that um, what you said? You want to sell your camera? Yeah, I'm going to sell my camera at this okay. point. So. <laughs> no, I'm don't joking. do that. I'm joking. Uh, short term, I'm just looking forward to all the workshops coming up. Yeah, we're just trying to do like a lot of workshops. Um, you know, just trying to take advantage of the time that we have and like yeah. the season, Halloween, everything. Theater's so. coming back. Theater is coming back. I've already got excellent. my first message for theater headshots. So, oh, nice. Theater is oh, coming good. back. Yeah, yeah theater is back. I yeah. miss that terribly. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Anyway, all right. Let's uh, let's quickly issue the challenge. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's it's a very very simple challenge. We'll share it on the Open Shutter Instagram. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we can get submissions from everybody before I host again. That's going to be the goal. Okay. Uh, so three or four weeks probably, and. The challenge is super broad, super open to interpretation, hmm. and super open to creativity. The challenge is glass. Okay. Photograph That's glass. glass. That's it. That's you interpret that however you want. Hmm. Stained glass, eyeglasses, cups, whatever. Yeah. Glass. It has to be glass. Just has like to it. be glass. So it's okay. open to a lot of interpretation. It's open yeah. to a lot of creativity. Macro? And every, everybody has access to glass at some point. And it can, so, be any, can, can be any. Can Jason? Can, can, it, can I be in it? <laughs> can can, can you Jason join? Of course. Yeah, Jason can submit. Of course. Like, and I everyone know the direction I'm going to go. <laughs> and yeah. Jason, if you want to come on the show while we're doing the glass show, you're welcome to come on the show too. For sure. Let's talk about that after. Yeah, I'd like to know when that is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So people yeah, are going to cool. email you, Brian. Yeah, we'll we'll set it up on the Open Shutter Instagram okay. account. Uh, okay. We'll set up a way to get the pictures to me so that we can show them on the show. Yeah. And we just want to okay. see what everybody can do with glass. It's just a creative challenge. So be Sweet. as absolutely creative as you want to be. No yeah. prizes. No prizes. Just just a challenge. Can I, can I shoot Marketing my budget with bragging rights. rights. They get to have your Pardon camera. It? You, you have gonna, glass in I'm your gonna, camera. Yeah. I'm going to shoot macro glass and see what I get. Yeah, do. There you go. <laughs> what, oh, I already, you I already have 17 ideas. Glass. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious to They're see what people IG. come up with. Yeah. Refraction, Excellent. refraction, all kinds of different things you can do with glass. So yeah. Yeah. really curious right. to see. Anyway, well, three, four, we're four. over time here, so let's uh, wrap this up here. Uh, right. Paul, final thoughts. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jason, for uh, spending the time. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, you crushed it. And uh, <laughs> There's so much to learn. It's great. It's just great to have different people on different uh, skill sets and experiences. So huge thank you. Hopefully you come back soon. Hopefully sometime sure. this year. Yeah, Talk about sure. the film stuff. I think it's super interesting. And uh, thanks everyone for jumping on. Hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, we'll see you next week. For some Andre, time. final thoughts? Again, uh, Jason, thanks for coming on, spending uh, your Wednesday night with us. That's awesome. And it just makes me want to go buy a lens and go play. <laughs> just something I else. I yeah, I can always help people spend their own money. Yes, well, I have thank no, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I really, I just, yes, I I'm... just want to, you know, get a lens and just go. I have so many ideas now that are yeah. just like, oh no, I have so many ideas already, and it's like, the yeah, FM twenty-eight yeah. millimeters only around four hundred bucks. Uh, <sighs> okay. Okay. Evan, yeah. final thoughts from you? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it was a great show. Um, it's you know, it's got me thinking about. Exactly. Just macro experiences yeah. and um you know got me thinking about grabbing that 100 millimeter macro lens oh you won't be disappointed it's, it's a great lens uh, yeah it's a great great I've been lens thinking about a macro dedicated macro lens for my weddings and stuff as well but never really got to do it because my tamron lenses kind of yeah. um really have close focusing even though it's not one-to-one -one per se but it's kind of have mm. some close focus and abilities, but seeing all the stuff that you can actually do if you're really doing macro, um, it's, it's encouraging. I want to yeah. go out and play around and see what I can come up with. 
that lens really doubles as a great portrait lens. And if that's yeah. your setting that you're in uh, it, at f2.8 at 100 mil, see, I'm, I'm selling it. Uh, you know, just go buy it. Just go buy it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jason, final thoughts yeah. from you, bud? No, just thank you again. I was kind of all over the place there today, but uh, it's a it's a it's a pretty diverse topic. And uh, thank you for having me on. And um, yeah, I look forward to talking again. Hopefully, maybe down the road about film. I have a long way to go, but uh, definitely have a long way to go, but it's a fun journey. So, yeah. And what's your IG, Jason, for for all the people? Uh, JD Foley Photography. Brian, and I have a bit in the thing. Yeah, Yeah, I have a website as well. Thank you, everybody, for for watching. We appreciate you all coming out. I know we're over time here, so wrap this up here. Make sure you subscribe to everybody. Make sure you like everybody's channels and Instagrams, and uh, I'll put all the links below so that when this video is live on YouTube, you can find everybody's links there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Goodbye. See ya. See ya.